Hey everybody, I just, uh, welcome back to my channel. I just saw this video on YouTube and I thought I'd check it out. And it seems interesting enough that I figured I would, uh, I would uh, bring you along for this, this journey and checking this video out. It appears to be, uh, well, it says N uh, SNC, so um, bombshell, Trudeau obstructed criminal investigation into himself, says the RCMP. So SNC-Lavalin was, uh, as almost all Canadians will know, was a scandal that happened a few years back where Trudeau obstructed the RCMP so he couldn't be found guilty of criminal activity. He was interfering with uh, an RCMP investigation into SNC Lavely, Lavalin, Lavalin, I think it's pronounced, pardon me, where there was a whole bunch of bribery scandals and scandals with prostitution and, and the whole bit. So let's just see what this committee has to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the witnesses. A part of the RCMP's examination to determine whether the Prime Minister uh, violated Section 139, Sub 2 of the Criminal Code by committing obstruction of justice, correct? That was part of the RCMP's examination. That's correct, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yeah. Okay, so looks like he's uh, asking the Commissioner, who is uh, just allowing his staff sergeant. To, to answer. And paragraph 19 of the RCMP investigation report states that the strongest theory towards an offense of obstruction of justice was that the Prime Minister shuffled Jody Wilson-Raybould out of the position of Attorney General so that a new Attorney General would make a different decision regarding the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. And it's fair to say that the RCMP did not have access to all material evidence surrounding Ms. Wilson-Raybould being shuffled out as Attorney General, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. And so, uh, just to clarify then or emphasize, the RCMP did not have access to all material evidence on the strongest theory surrounding the Prime Minister's potential criminality involving obstruction of justice, correct? That's correct, yeah. Mr. Chair. And the reason the RCMP did not have access to that material evidence on what was central to determining whether the Prime Minister broke the law was because of the parameters of the scope of the Order of Counsel with respect to the waiver of Cabinet confidentiality, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. The parameters did not allow us to fully look into this one. However... But Okay, so just to catch you up on, on this, when the scandal came to light, the then Justice Minister had uh, encouraged an investigation, but she was shut down. And then she was dismissed from Cabinet, and all the discussions surrounding her dismissal and SNC-Lavalin in cabinet were declared uh, to be private and confidential under cabinet uh, privilege. And, you know, uh, so we couldn't hear what, we couldn't find out exactly why she was dismissed. And she was uh, basically uh, muzzled by parliamentary or, or sorry, cabinet, privilege she couldn't talk about it it was it would have been an offense for her to discuss this which is kind of um, I think very ironic since she it would be offense it would be an offense for the justice minister to talk about an offense that Trudeau committed while in cabinet think about that for a second I should Th uh, just th add. Thank you for that. You answered it. The parameters did not allow you to 
uh, get that evidence. Now, uh, there is one person who had the authority to expand the parameters of that order in council, and that is the Prime Minister himself, correct? Uh, I would have to say, Mr. Chair, I'm not exactly sure of, of the exact process of where the Prime Minister would be involved in such a decision. Uh, however, I, I do believe the decision has to be made within the, uh, somewhere within the government. Uh, I would submit the decision would have to be made by the Prime Minister, but the RCMP uh, went and requested an expansion of the scope to obtain that evidence, to follow that evidence, correct? Before we proceeded with the assessment, yes, we did make a request for an expansion uh, to the parameters. I, I, I would just add, Mr. Cooper, it was not the Okay, so this, this is something else that we have to, you have to think about here. <clears throat> so Canada's federal police force that Pierre Trudeau, Justin's father, made responsible directly to parliament or directly to cabinet is responsible for investigating government, offi government officials. So the organization who is responsible for investigating government officials is also uh, under direct control of those same government officials. And there, those government officials who are being investigated can control the information that is available to the entity, to the police force that are investigating them. This is why police forces need to be independent, especially at that level, when investigating the government. They need independence, and they need access. This is a totally messed up system. Follow the evidence. It's to glean additional information. That could be evidence. Correct. And uh, that request was turned down on August 30th, 2019. I would have to say, Mr. Chair, that the request for the expansion was uh, it, was not allowed. It, it was turned down, and it was turned down by the PCO, the Prime Minister's Department. Correct? Uh, we, Mr. Chair, we did receive a letter from the Department of Justice. Uh, I, I could not remember exactly, specifically, if this came from the. Yeah. Well, it, it was from the PCO, and that's in the RCMP's investigation report, and uh, would it be fair to say that the refusal by the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, to expand the scope of the Order in Council significantly impeded the full investigation into the Prime Minister's potential obstruction of justice? It limited our capability of pursuing a, a full investigation. And, and it would have limited it in a fairly significant way. Because after all, we're talking about going to the heart of the matter of obstruction. And, and again, I, I don't know what additional, not knowing what additional information is out there, it's hard for me to speculate that uh, there's a Pandora box out there which is full of information, so it's hard for us without speculating. Well, let the record show that the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO, obstructed the RCMP investigation into the Prime Minister's potential obstruction of justice. Are you aware of any other Canadian who can single-handedly block the RCMP from investigating his own criminality in such an effective way as the Prime Minister? Good question. Fantastic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the term, Mr. Pl Mr. President, I wouldn't use the term block. The RCMP is when it runs an investigation and operates within the parameters and the regulations that we're allowed to. And we see international security investigation as well, where there's some information that we don't have access to, we can't use into an investigation. So, it's the it's the parameters it's the it's the parameters that we. Are. Answer, I think I think the answer to that question is there is no one who has such powers. And was any explanation provided by the Prime Minister's personal department why there was this refusal to expand the scope of the order in council? Again, um, Mr. Chair, as far as for a response on this one, of course, it, it was indicated, of course, uh, the, um, the importance, of course, of these privileges that do exist. Uh, they are there for a reason, and uh, again, 
uh, as the Commissioner mentioned, well, we it, do have to operate within these it, parameters. It would seem to me to be part of a pattern of a cover-up. That's right. That's what it would seem to me to be. How can the Prime Minister be subject to the rule of law? Okay, of course, uh, I have to come to the defense of the Commissioner on this one. He can't speculate on that, um, you know, for political reasons, also for um, legal reasons. He's, he can only, he can only really comment on what he knows. What he knows is that he didn't have access to the information because of parliamentary procedures. The fact that those procedures are corrupt in nature, he, as the commissioner, uh, may believe that, but he's not able to, to speak that aloud. And that's primarily because the Parliament of Canada has taken control of the police, and he is an employee of the Parliament of Canada. He can't, he can only speak facts. He can't speculate and he can't give opinions. So, uh, although I'm, I retired before this commissioner was, um, you know, came to power, I, I do believe that he, um, you know, I, I get it. And, and I want to know the answer to those questions as well. And I can come to my own conclusions on that, but I don't think that it's uh, really something that the commissioner can can speak to. Law, like every other Canadian, if his personal department can shield him from an RCMP criminal investigation. Absolutely. So, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll let uh, individuals draw their own conclusion. What I what I come back to is we operate within a set of regulations and parameters that unfortunately we did we made the effort to go and get additional information and it was refused. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner. Two -tier thank system you. Of justice, I thank would you. say. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Okay, so that is uh, it's kind of revealing in itself. He actually answered the same way that that I did, only more eloquently. I. I would argue that he, uh, he, he's got more experience at being political in his uh, answers and in, in his speech. So, yeah, very interesting. So I guess this was a couple of days ago that it, uh, that, uh, that was broadcast. So, yeah, very interesting that it is finally coming up at uh, committee, at some sort of committee that, uh, you know, he, they're asking these hard questions. Now, in Canada, uh, I don't know how similar it is to the U.S. where a sitting president can't be prosecuted for crimes or for anything that he does in the service of the country. Uh, you know, so if he does something that's not in the service of the country in his that are in his interests, uh, as we're seeing with Donald Trump, then maybe, uh, you know, indictments can be brought against him. In Canada, I'm not sure where that privilege extends to, but I'm under the belief that if a crime has been committed, that the prime minister can technically be charged, probably won't be. There's probably some sort of privilege there. I would suggest that if they can make an argument that it was required for the security of Canada, blah, 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 that, that he can't be. But uh, I'm under the impression, and I could be wrong, that a prime minister can be charged. So in any event, within the next two years, keep your fingers crossed, he won't be prime minister anymore. Hopefully, uh, within the next few months, if uh, if we can get an election, a spring election, it's getting into March now. So, you know, it would be probably a late spring election, maybe even early summer election if it was called. So let's uh, let's uh, stay tuned and and figure out what's going on. But definitely, it's interesting that they're at least bringing this up at committee and that the commissioner was uh, summoned to this committee 
And I think his answers, although were, were very were restrained because he had to, I think they're very telling of what happened and why we need to uh, unseal those records and get to the truth of the matter, if those records even still exist. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, reaction, and we'll see you on the next video. Hey everybody, I hope you liked that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. Also share with your friends if you liked it, and we'll see you on the next video.